Good evening and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include two new projects are up and running for Burgio. The Advent Mitten Tree Project was a great success. Mr. Greg Hillier is here with the BDD report. These stories plus community events, the BBS Playbill, Off the Rack and more coming up after this. Virgil Broadcasting System employees, along with the Board of Directors and Volunteers, would like to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a safe and prosperous New Year. Two new projects have been approved and are up and running for Virgil. The first project we visited was with a group that has been hired to cut brush from Virgil to Peter Strides. These projects were applied for by the BDDB for the residents that required more hours of employment to qualify for EI benefits. There were approximately 21 people hired to cut brush along Virgia Highway for a seven week period. Many of the workers don't require the full seven weeks to qualify for their EI benefits. For example, two or three workers only need two weeks. A couple of others need three weeks. There are approximately five workers with the project that need all seven weeks. Through this method, the BDDB were able to R this number of people. The second project we visited on Monday was at Aaron's Arm. Five workers have been hired for eight weeks period to head another 125 feet to the existing docking facilities. With projects like these, many of our residents will be able to stay at home and not have to leave town to get hours required to apply for their EI benefits. The Anglican Church has once again had a very successful mitten tree. The ladies involved in this project invited me to come to take a look at the knitted goods that were donated to the mitten tree. Every year for the past eight years, knitted goods have been sent to Montreal to be passed out to immigrants arriving in Canada. Anne Robinson is the lady in charge of this project. In a letter dated December 29, 1998, she sent in care of Jesse Skinner, Miss Robinson states that, Yesterday we welcomed small children from Peru, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, and Zaire with their families and a few fathers. The mothers were happy to find new and knit mitts and socks, for which we thank Newfoundland knitters. Miss Robson goes on to say, you would have enjoyed hearing me lecture them in French and Spanish about washing and knits and not putting them in the machine or using hot water. The items donated this year was up from last year. 1999 mitten tree. We got five scarves, one sweater, six pair of gloves, five pair of slippers, three baby seats, 110 pair of mitts, 133 pair of socks, and 21 caps. Thanks everybody for knitting and hope to do it again next year. Now over to Mr. Greg Ilyer with the BDDB report. Good evening residents of Burjo. It's my pleasure to, uh, to be here this evening to address you in regards to some of the activities that have been ongoing with the Burjo Diversification Development Board. Uh, firstly, I guess I should apologize. It was our original goal to uh, try and, uh, and, and make, I guess, a presentation at least once a month, but due to uh, various work commitments uh, on my part mostly, uh, I've been unable to, uh, to take the time and, and be here. It's been uh, Frustrating in some ways, but uh, of course, being that busy with with a number of initiatives and things ongoing, uh, it's just now I'm getting the opportunity to uh, to address you this evening. Uh, tonight, I'd like to uh, address a number of key issues, um, and of course, as I stated uh, in my last time that I was uh, making the address uh, to the residents here, that uh, it's still our intent to at least on a monthly basis uh, uh, be here and inform the public of uh, Burjo exactly what the BDDB is up to and the various issues related to uh, development in the community. So having said that, uh, there's a few things that I'd like to mention this evening. The first one, of course, uh, as some people might know, is uh, in the last month and a half or so, we had our annual general meeting of the, uh, the board and, of course, in attendance was uh, our honorable uh, MHA, Mr. Calvin Parsons. Uh, based on uh, the uh, scenario that took place that evening, uh, the attendance was, uh, was fairly well and up from the previous year and I'm pleased to say that we, uh, we have managed to get a uh, full slate of board of directors for this coming year. Uh, I think the board is uh, very diverse. Uh, there's individuals there from uh, all segments and sectors of the community. So I think over the course of the next year it should prove to be very interesting uh, with a lot of ideas and hopefully some new initiatives uh, coming forward. So we'll certainly be looking uh, forward to that 
in the coming months. In relationship to tourism, as uh, probably a lot of people are aware, uh, we've been in discussions with the Festival of Coast Tourism Association over trying to get a uh, kiosk developed for the Burgio Junction, which would promote the southwest coast of uh, the island here. And uh, I'm pleased to say that through the support of the town of Ramia, the town of Burgio, and of course the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we've contributed a substantial amount of funds towards the actual production of that sign. We are anticipating and hoping that the sign will be here uh, by the new year. And once it arrives, uh, we are and intend to make sure that sign gets up as soon as possible. So hopefully uh, that initiative will, will take care of itself after certainly a substantial period of time has passed in, in terms of discussing this issue and, and trying to put it to rest. And I think the, the general public will be quite pleased with the quality and, uh, and the information that will be uh, advertised on this sign. Also, uh, in terms of tourism, again, uh, there has been some discussions in regards to the southwest coast, various initiatives we can try and uh, be involved in to try and promote this area as a tourism destination. Uh, it's our intent to try and get somebody to represent this region on the Festival Coast Tourism Association in the coming months, and I really feel that uh, we need a strong voice. Uh, a lot of the emphasis that, are, that have been placed in that association, of course, as a lot of people are aware, within the, the Port of Port and Bay St. George and Stephenville area, and uh, we feel that we need to have somebody around the table to ensure that, uh, that our needs and, and aspirations in regards to tourism are addressed. So uh, we're going to look for uh, some representation from around the area, and, uh, and hopefully in the next coming months we'll have uh, somebody representing us on that board. I'd just like to address the uh, community complex. As most people know, there's, there's been a move for a quite a substantial amount of time to, uh, to see if, in conjunction with the Department of Education, we can see an arena built uh, as part of the construction of the all-grade school. Uh, over the course of the last couple of months, I've had the opportunity to meet with some of the individuals involved in the uh, uh, arena committee. And uh, we have tried to do uh, a bit of work. We've met a number of times with our MHA to discuss the issue as well as representatives of the Department of Education. We are now in the process of getting some cost estimates in terms of two aspects. We are looking at a joint facility in conjunction with the school board where we would build a stadium uh, as part of that overall facility. However, in anticipation that that might not uh, come to fruition, we are looking at the potential of constructing a separate facility. As a lot of people know, there's been uh, a number of studies done over the last five or six years in regards to the arena facility. However, what we'd like to do is update our figures, update the plans, and then, of course, at that point in time, uh, see exactly where we can go in terms of funding and who, if and when we are going to coordinate this thing uh, in conjunction with the school board. I should note, if it hasn't already been mentioned through the town council reports, that the town of Burjo has submitted the stadium facility as their major uh, infrastructure with the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs. So we're hoping that we can access some funding through, uh, through that avenue. And of course, in the meantime, we'll be looking at other sources of funding, uh, such as through the FRAMED program and, of course, through COA with their infrastructure works program. Uh, I just noted the, the FRAM Ed program, and as probably a lot of people are aware, this is a new initiative uh, by, jointly by the federal and provincial government to try and provide some sustainable employment in rural Newfoundland, in particularly communities that have been affected by the downturn in the, uh, in the cod fishery and, of course, fishery overall. Uh, during the course of the last month, uh, I had the opportunity to be in Stephenville, and we met with representatives of ACOA. We put such in initiatives as the BBS uh, IT initiative on the table. Uh, as some people know, we're working on trying to get uh, some agricultural pilot projects going, uh, looking at lobster enhancement programs and a number of other issues. I'm pleased to say that uh, tentatively at this point in time, ACOA has uh, given their, their uh, unofficial nod to a number of these initiatives. And over the course of uh, the next month, uh, their representatives are uh, working on various details and we're hoping that through the, uh, the minister responsible for ACOA and other provincial ministers that there'll be certain announcements of uh, various programs and activities taking place. So we're really looking forward to those initiatives uh, happening, I would estimate, over the course of the next month or two. So it should be some interesting times in terms of looking at trying to uh, develop some initiatives that could prove to be uh, certainly economically uh, viable for, for this community and certainly the region as a whole. Um, in terms of the short-term projects, uh, I guess a lot of people are aware right now that we've been uh, fortunate through the assistance of our MHA and other avenues 
to acquire two of approximately the five to six uh, project applications that we have submitted to various uh, government agencies, both federal and provincial, to, uh, to try and initiate not only some employment generation, but of course to uh, try and develop some infrastructure in the community. Uh, as some people already know, we do have the Aaron Zarn project, which has started last week. And of course, uh, this past week, we started up a brush cutting proje project, which was sponsored by the uh, Department of Work Services and Transportation. At this point in time, there's uh, approximately 27 people uh, employed in those programs, and uh, they will all uh, finish at varying different times uh, due to the needs in terms of hours. To, to clarify a number of things, and I know it's very difficult for people at times, however, we've had to come to some s sense in, in the guidelines and the responsibilities of, of the sponsoring agency and, of course, the agencies that we deal with in terms of giving us this funding money. We have to follow their guidelines. What the board has done, and, of course, we have followed the guidelines, is in terms of our hiring selections, we have basically taken uh, the individual's names, we have listed their requirements in terms of hours needed to be EI eligible, and we have gone down through the list and basically taken one after another in terms of uh, who needs the least hours, and then on so down, or sorry, so on down the line until we use up all of our available man hours. And unfortunately, at that time, at that point, we had to stop. Um, we feel that in some senses, this is the only fair way to do it uh, to individuals in the community. One of our major objectives of these programs, if not the major objective, I should say, is to get as many people EI eligible as possible. And uh, that is the ultimate goal, and that is the, the, uh, the basis on which we are doing the hiring selections. It is based on no other uh, formula whatsoever. Uh, unfortunately, there are some people uh, that have uh, you know, been on projects previously, However, you know, we have to abide by these new programs. As people are aware, the ones that we have in place now are substantially different than the guidelines for programs that have pre previously been sponsored within the community. So I hope people understand it. We are working on a number of other initiatives in terms of projects. We're hoping that uh, by the time you hear this, uh, this broadcast, uh, that we'll have some other uh, announcements to be made in terms of other uh, program activities. and. Uh, Certainly, it's our main goal to try and fulfill the needs of the residents of the community. I will also add, though, and I've always stated it, that in terms of these short-term projects, we like to see, uh, you know, good development of activities. Uh, right now, the, uh, the projects that we have applied for are all considered of a high priority within the community that could put some very uh, good amenities here that would help us either as a tourism sector or advertising or just enhance the overall community for the enjoyment of the residents of the area. So I'm pleased to say that the projects that we have applied for are certainly things that have been identified as needs in the community, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to add more amenities as time goes on. Last but not least, uh, at this point in time, I'd just like to mention the, uh, um, I guess, uh, the plant situation and in terms of uh, potential crab quota for the year 2000. Uh, as uh, just about most people know in the community, it's pretty well the end of the, uh, uh, the plant for this year. Uh, which means basically we're back in the same situation as we were before the plant opened. There's really no major guarantees of what might or might not happen in the year 2000. However, there has been a number of ongoing meetings. Uh, the town of Burgio and, of course, the mayor has been uh, very involved in, in uh, these meetings. We've had a number of conference calls with uh, representatives from Galtus as well as Ramia. Uh, we've come up with uh, a kind of a situation where we feel uh, that uh, it might be advantageous to us at this point in time to try and secure something for the South Coast uh, for next year. Um, right now, uh, working in conjunction with our local MHA and, of course, the uh, Honorable Oliver Langdon, who was the MHA and, and uh, minister uh, responsible for the Ramey and Galtus area, we will be making a presentation in St. John's on January 6th to various uh, agencies, including the FFAW, DFO, and uh, uh, Minister John Efford, and others, uh, to basically see what we can do about trying to secure some type of allocation for this region next year. We are putting uh, on the table a number of potential options that they can use and view, and it's certainly our intent by the time that meeting is finished that evening to have a good idea of what these different groups and organizations and, of course, the government officials are coming from in terms of their support for this type of initiative. 
Uh, from that point on, uh, the steering committee or, or, or group of people that have been put together representing the communities will meet again to determine what necessary steps will need to be taken next to try and get some type of allocation. So hopefully over the course of the next month, you'll, you'll hear more information on that area. And, uh, you know, if things go according to plan, uh, you never know. We might see something happening uh, much sooner or later in terms of this area here. We're very pleased to date that uh, we are working with the other two communities. We feel that this would be the most viable way to go. And after the number of conference calls we had, it seems and appears that everybody is in, uh, is in partnership and would like to work together to this common goal of trying to get an allocation. Finally, on behalf of the, the board and the staff of the Virgil Diversification Development Board, I'd like to wish you and yours a uh, Merry Christmas and hopefully a prosperous new year. Good evening. Stay with us for more of This Week in Review coming up after this. As you visit your family and friends this holiday season, keep in mind a designated driver. Please don't drink and drive. On Wednesday of this week, we were invited to the Sea Cadet Christmas Party. This year, the party was organized a little different. It was a semi-formal party. This gave the Sea Cadets a chance to dress up in fine style. Each cadet invited a guest, and a dance was held at the community center. Santa Claus was on end to give out presents to all the good sea cadets. Elementary School held their annual Christmas concert on Thursday of this week. Of course, the house was packed with family and friends who came to watch their students perform. It is tradition that each year the classes do a skit or recite poems and sing at least one Christmas song. We weren't disappointed. Here is an example of one of the many performances. Well, lesson learned. This is Christmas, remember which way you turn. Our OBs are underway, and have you been watching the news? <laughs> My God, yes, it is wonderful. I'm glad you made that Billy Barry and he's the Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> is it true they were trying to swallow a big, young, and fishery pilot? My God, there's going to be a fire to make the fishery. <laughs> Yes, my mate, somebody's going to be into the big bucks, and you can bet Billy Barry's going to have this year. He's a right and proper newbie, Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald, oops, my dear, I don't care if he's Donald Trump or Donald Trump. <laughs> be a good cheeky job back there on this rock. You'll be getting one big smooch from me next time I lay in the way, Donald. <laughs> Well, me darlings, I gotta go and get some nice coat for supper. The bus is gonna be on a night and I haven't seen Jack for so long. I'm tired of being afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, then we're going with ya, cause I got to get me ears on. And Mary got to get me welcome home banners that they made up the school. <laughs> the Christmas concert will be shown in its entirety at a later date. Now over to Mayor Han with the Council Report. Uh, good evening. Virgil Town Council held its uh, regular meeting on Wednesday, December the 15th. This is our last meeting for the year. 
I guess it's the last for the century and, and for the millennium. Items discussed at the meeting, uh, our fish plant. Uh, council discussed this for some time and it's now planned that there will be some members of our town and Galtas and Ramya will be going to uh, St. John's on January the 6th, meet with uh, the Minister of Fisheries, Mr. Tobin, and other uh, people to see if we can some way uh, shore up a quota for our fish plant for the year 2000. So I hope that uh, we're successful in this, uh, this endeavor. The First Light Program, uh, uh, Council along with uh, BDDB was hoping that we could put something together called the First Light Program to, uh, uh, to uh, celebrate the coming in of the new millennium. However, uh, uh, two meetings was held and very few people turned up and there was very in little interest expressed in it. Uh, so therefore, uh, it was decided to uh, cancel this endeavor. Applications for building. Uh, application from a Variety Quick Shop to enlarge uh, their store and uh, to uh, create some more parking in the area where Mr. Herrick Rhymes' house presently stands. Uh, that application was approved. Another application was from Ingram's Foodland to reconstruct their store in the in the same area where their whole store used to be. Uh, apparently, uh, they're going to try to have the store rebuilt as fast as possible. Uh, pr uh, approval in principle was given to this application as well. The council approved what's known as a baby gift, uh, what's known as a Millennium Baby Gift Program. And that is, uh, there's a, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a coin uh, put out by the post office, and it's valued somewhere around about uh, three hundred dollars. And what it is, you give this to the to the first baby uh, born in your town in the year two thousand. Now that's got to be the, the 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 baby doesn't have to be born in Burjo. It can be born in St. John's or. Corner Brook or anywhere, but the parents and the child must be living in Burgio, must be residents of Burgio. So we'll see who will be the uh, the lucky recipient of uh, of that award. Council uh, uh, will be writing a letter supporting a resolution from the town of Corner Brook, or, or rather the city of Corner Brook. Uh, the city of Corner Brook has uh, drafted a resolution, uh, a, a resolution to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, asking for more equitable uh, trans air transportation costs. And the town of Bur uh, Burgio will be supporting this resolution. Now that was uh, all the items for discussion at our meeting. And it's that time of year again, so therefore, on behalf of the councillors, the staff, and myself, I would like to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy New Year. Thank you. Stay with us for Off the Rack, the community events, and the BBS Playbill, all after this. We would like to thank you, our viewers, for tuning in over the past year, and we look forward to your continued viewing in 2000. We would also like to thank all our volunteers for their hard work and dedication during the past year. Season's greetings to all of you from Hall of Us at Burgio Broadcasting System. Off the rack. This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of a Christmas bandwagon. Here are the girl guides singing Jingle Bells. Let's look back to December 1991. So the Burgio girl guide now is going to give us a sign called Jingle Bells.
Good evening. Welcome to the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. I'm Inger Strickland. The winner of the Sea Cadet TV Bingo was Millie Burton. Congratulations, Millie. The fairy schedule for Christmas Day and New Year's Day is as follows. Leaves Ramya 2 p.m. for Burjo, and leaves Burjo 3.30 p.m. for Ramya. The loading of the Anglican Church Memorial Memory Tree will be held on Wednesday, December 22nd at 7 p.m. There will be a reading or two of, and singing of some Christmas carols. Please come along and join us as we light the tree in memory of our loved ones. The Volunteer Fire Department are having their annual ticket sale on the emergency kit. You may purchase a ticket from any member of the fire department. Tickets are $1 each or 3 for $2. The kit includes propane stove, lamp, glow stick, smoke detector, fire extinguisher, lighter, and flashlights. The fire department will be having a breakfast with Santa on Thursday, December 23rd, starting at 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. The firemen will be serving pancakes, bologna, or toast of your choice of tea, coffee, milk, or juice. Santa himself will be there to greet you and may have some treats for the children. There may be some music for your enjoyment as well. So come on down to the fire hall on December 23rd. Gord Ingram has received some Foodland Christmas carols and recipe books. These books are available to any group or organization free of charge. If you would like a copy for your group, please pick them up at the gas bar. If your group or organization has an upcoming event planned, we will be happy to advertise it for you. Just call the BBS office by Wednesday of each week to items include in the proportion of our broadcast. That concludes the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. See you next week. BBS Playbill. Join us on Monday at 7 p.m. for the Lions Annual Santa Claus Parade. Tune in on Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a rebroadcast of Pansy's Garden. On Wednesday, we'll have the H.J. Hey Matthews Christmas Concert. Tune in on Thursday when we'll have a rebroadcast of the Christmas Bandwagon. And I'll be here again next week with This Year in Review. Please stay tuned now for our Christmas Bandwagon. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night.